So I've just measured and I'm 1.1 meters away from the camera. So if you had moderate hearing loss, you probably struggled to hear me. The World Health Organization grades hearing loss on a spectrum and their most recent report suggests it's more widespread than it's ever been. World Health Organization recently announcing a billion young people are at risk of hearing loss. In an epidemic of hearing loss. So how big a problem is this and how widespread? Rates of hearing loss have been rising for decades. In 1985, around 42 million people were estimated to have moderate to profound hearing loss. And by 2019, this number had risen to 430 million. If current trends continue, it's estimated that this could rise to nearly 1 billion people by 2050. And this trend is being seen everywhere. The US, China, India, Nigeria, they're all seeing the same rates of increase. So why does no one seem to care? For decades, researchers have put the rising cases of hearing loss down to people living longer. And it's partly true. This is the global prevalence of hearing loss and how it changes with age. Over 58% of moderate or higher grade hearing loss is experienced by adults above the age of 60. But hearing loss shouldn't be considered just an inevitable consequence of aging. I think hearing loss in a previous generation was always cast off as something that we just have to accept with age. I think we have a much better understanding of how it doesn't need to be accepted as that and how there are significant downstream impacts of living with unmanaged hearing loss. That's Joe Mignoli, a consultant ear surgeon that specialises in hearing loss. I spoke with him to better understand why we lose our hearing and the things we can do to prevent it. So the way to understand it is to break it down in terms of the anatomy. The way we hear is as a result of, of three sections, a conduction system, a microphonic system, and your brain processing all that sound. The conduction system is made up of the outer and middle ear. Sound waves enter the ear canal and strike the eardrum, causing it to vibrate. These vibrations are then transferred to three tiny bones called ossicles. Their job is to amplify the sound waves in the inner ear. There are problems that can, can affect the conduction system, like an infection or a hole in the eardrum. The microphonic system refers to this inner ear, specifically this snail-shaped structure called the cochlea. This converts those sound waves into electrical signals that the brain can understand. There are problems that can affect the microphonic system, one of which is, is ageing, but there are also autoimmune diseases, noise trauma, your genetics can play a role in losing your hearing. Hearing loss that is caused by aging is known as presbycusis. It refers to the gradual loss of sensory hair cells in the cochlea over time, meaning less sound is converted into electrical signals that the brain can understand. There are many causes of hearing loss and distinguishing between the different types will help to guide treatment options. And so when someone presents with hearing loss, the first step is to establish where along that pathway the problem is. Is it a conductive problem? In which case we might be able to reverse uh, reverse the loss. Is it with the microphonic system? In which case the focus is going to be on amplifying sound down the ear canal to, to overcome that, that hearing loss. Or is there a problem with, with uh, central, proce central auditory processing that we need to deal with? Each person is on their own unique hearing journey, which can change throughout a lifetime. Ultimately, a person's hearing journey is defined by a balance between harmful causative factors, so things like poor genetics or smoking, and protective factors, so things like avoiding loud noise and being up to date on vaccinations. If we take an individual who doesn't have a genetic susceptibility to hearing loss and isn't exposed to any causative factors in their life, their hearing capacity changes like this as they age. But if the same individual is now exposed to some of those harmful causative factors, they can suffer from some significant hearing loss later in life. Mm -hmm. Equally, an individual who is susceptible to hearing loss could take measures to protect their hearing and dramatically reduce the hearing loss they experience. This is why it's so important that people don't just neglect their hearing. It's an invisible, slowly progressive condition in the majority. Things like needing to turn up the volume on the television, or noticing a high pitch ringing in the ear. Perhaps difficulty hearing in conversations, often asking others to repeat themselves. Picking up on signs like these early is vital. One study that followed 3,777 people aged 65 and over for 25 years found that there was a strong association of unaddressed hearing loss with dementia and depression. These findings were also supported in other studies. Hearing loss has been shown to increase the risk of falls in elderly as well as hospitalization. So it's more important than ever before for people to start taking action against hearing loss. So what does that look like? If someone is potentially losing their hearing, then they won't necessarily have a way of knowing whether they have a reversible cause of hearing loss or a progressive irreversible cause of hearing loss. And only an examination and a hearing test will, will show that. For those who have started to notice the decline in their hearing, you need to see a doctor as soon as possible. And then depending on the cause of hearing loss will help to guide treatment options. 
One example is if your hearing loss is caused by a condition called otolosclerosis. It's where the bones in your middle ear begin to fuse, preventing sound waves from entering the inner ear and being understood by the brain. A surgeon like Joe can remove and replace the fused bones to restore hearing. But if your hearing loss is not reversible, it doesn't mean you're hopeless. We want to avoid that situation where someone becomes socially isolated to the point where it's already had a big impact on their mental health and cognition. There are still things that doctors can do to improve your hearing. For example, age-related hearing loss is not reversible, but being fitted with a hearing aid will dramatically improve quality of life. But by far, the first line of defense is prevention. So what are some of the methods to prevent getting hearing loss in the first place? I think it's, it goes without saying that we should all be sensible in terms of our loud noise exposure. The WHO recommends keeping sound exposure below 80 decibels, and if this can't be done, then to use a pair of well-fitted earplugs. We live in a world where everyone is connected and constantly wired in. Mark! He's wired in. How about now? You still wired in? So a good rule of thumb for staying safe when using earphones is to listen at a volume below 60% of maximum. iPhones also now notify you if your music is too loud. But in my experience, noise cancelling earphones are the best way to enjoy music at the lowest level of volume possible. The WHO puts a strong emphasis on practicing good ear hygiene to prevent hearing loss also. I would say um, treating infections early, so any pain or discharge from the ear, don't sit on it, it get it seen before it, become, before it leads to an irreversible hearing loss. So when it comes to keeping good ear hygiene, an important thing to note is that needing to clean the inside of your ears is a myth. Using things like cotton buds only irritate the ear and increase the risk of ear infections and eardrum rupture, both of which are causes of hearing loss. Nothing smaller than the size of your elbow should ever enter the ear canal. And like with so many other medical conditions, looking after your health is key. Eating well, sticking to a healthy lifestyle and quitting smoking have all been proven to prevent hearing loss. Here's a final word from Ear Surgeon Joe. Hearing is precious, but we only really realise the value the day we don't have it. As always, references and additional reading will be in the video description. Thank you for getting to the end of the video and please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you also follow Joe on social media too. You can check out our previous video I made on the link between British colonialism and increased risk of diabetes in South Asian populations. Until next time and see you soon.